Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the wild sage in the world of gods. Part 2. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. The next day, before the sun rose, a startled cry was heard from Artemis's tent. As the hunters burst in they realized Artemis was being held down on the floor by her arms, Naruto's weights preventing her from standing up. She tried, but the weight kept her down. She growled in annoyance and exercised some divine power to stand up straight and undo the fastenings. Which she really shouldn't have done inside her tent. They collided with the floor in a loud bang, ripping a hole in the bottom of her tent and breaking her toe in the process. She gave out a startled yelp and hopped around on one foot for a bit before a large flash caught everyone's attention. Standing behind them all was Naruto, with a camera and the largest grin she had ever seen. The hunters connected the dots pretty fast, and after a few stunned moments, Artemis gave out a battle cry. Seize him. Naruto laughed wildly as he led the hunters, in their sleeping wear, all around camp, while dodging arrows and laughing the whole way. They eventually caught him and got him to delete the picture, even trying to beat him up, but they broke their own fingers trying, and Naruto ended up having to heal them as penance. All in all, it was a good morning. Especially for Zo she got a copy of the picture. She and Naruto grinned at each other, before Zo nodded, our agreement is henceforth fulfilled. Naruto gave a mock salute, pleasure doing business with you. Glad to be a part of it. And then he turned to see Artemis, glaring at him. So you were the mastermind, eh? Naruto laughed and two-finger prodded her in the forehead, earning him multiple cries of dismay, catch me if you can. And so, he then played a dangerous game of catch the Naruto, including arrows, knives, and anything else they could get their hands on each other included. An hour later, with Naruto and his pursuers sweating, he laughed and waved. Sorry ladies, maybe next time. Train hard. And then he jogged away, laughing to himself as the hunters promised vengeance. When he left, they all stared at Artemis, my lady, why is he so different? Boys are so but him I thought he hated us, you in particular, was he lying? Is he tricking us? Artemis shook her head, no, we reached a accord in our spar. It's much easier to understand someone's intent in a battle, there is no room for lies, only truth can be expressed but yes he is different. Speaking of which, I have something to tell you girls. I am going on a solo hunt. Naruto wandered a distance away, coming to the cliffside and diving in. He sank into the water, his happy mask fading beneath the ripples, and exercised some water manipulation to wash himself and his clothes clean. It was a brilliant idea, using the water's natural force and pull to clean his hair and clothing. All he had to do was make it move chaotically with more speed, and in a few minutes, he was clean. His clothes were drying on the cliffside, and he was holding his breath at the bottom, staring at the water's rippling surface. You know Gaki, those Olympians they aren't like Kagaya. Son Goku said. Naruto snorted, blowing a small air ring, yeah. What's different? She was more human. Sure she was in fast in the beginning, but her blade held no lies. She is looking out for the girl's best interests. And not caring what damage she leaves behind. Aki. Listen to me damn it. Look, all I'm saying is that you're letting your pre-existing biases cloud your judgment. Keep this up and you be just as bad as those damned villagers. Naruto choked on water when he heard that, and when he was about to reply, Kukuo spoke up. You are being unreasonable, something I will not allow in my Jinch Kriki. She is a goddess, yes, but she isn't yours, she is an Olympian, they are different. Yes they may be power hungry, snobbish, and flawed, but that is what makes them more human. Kagaya chose to be a monster, she sought to make everyone else powerless. Don't paint them with the same brush. Naruto sighed, cleansing his thought process and letting his mind fall blank as he relaxed. It wasn't that he made a habit of reclining nude at the bottom of a river but something about it was enjoyable. Naruto closed his eyes and nodded in understanding before giving a mental thumbs up and focusing on what to do no. It was obvious that she and he would probably never see each other again, so should he cash in on the favor now? They would probably never be friends so what should he is for? Immortality was unappealing, he had no desire to be one of the divine pricks. Err, Naruto, about that. Jayuki said guiltily. Naruto frowned as he listened to all the other biju try and shut him up almost all at once, and he grew concerned. What is it? Is there something wrong? Want to change posts? Are you bored? Jayuki grimaced and shook his head, no it concerns the consequences of holding all nine of us without the Rinnegan. Naruto blinked, okay, so I don't have the Rinnegan, what's wrong? Well what's unique about Rinnegan wielders is that their chakra has all five natures, making it much easier to contain us you were okay with Kurama, because of your Yuzumaki traits and shared wind affinity, it's why you survived as a baby but with all of us it's destroying you. All the Bijuu fell silent as they waited for Naruto's reaction. What's going to happen to you guys? 
Are you going to be okay? Naruto nearly screamed in his mind, sitting up straight in the water and being knocked around by the current. The Bijuu were startled and even touched at his concern, but felt it was not in the right place. You idiot. The strain will kill you. Naruto kicked out of the water, landing on its surface and walking quickly to the shore, where his clothes were still wet, but it would have to do. Well? Nothing I can do about it, right? How much time do you guys have? The Bijuu were actually starting to get annoyed Naruto. You will die. Naruto sighed, I was always meant to die. Which? The Bijuu were agape at that statement. I wasn't supposed to live very long, that's the fate of all Jinch Kriki, slaves to the village until the power inside them burns them from the inside out. I knew I was going to die, and I knew that having all of you inside me would hasten the process. Naruto. Naruto grinned at the sky, looking up as he put on his shirt. But it's worth it. I know how much you guys have suffered at the hands of other shinobi I figured, well I can't buy you much time, I could give you a chance to be free of that pain for a while. I don't regret a thing. The Bijuu were silent for a long time after that, before all of them cut their links with him to talk amongst themselves. Naruto sighed at being kept out of the loop and just hoped they didn't do anything stupid. Like leaving his body in this new world. Naruto finished getting dressed and channeled some wind chakra around his body to whip around his form and dried him fairly quickly. Naruto smiled at their concern for him, but he would always believe that their lives came before his, that was how this would work, now and always. Naruto did some basic stretches and started climbing up the cliff, walking slowly as he thought. He knew that he was eventually going to burn out. Having multiple chakra monsters inside you would do that to anyone. The only reason he was alive right now was the seal his father gave him as a child. Helping him deal with the load and holding it back. However, having several chakra natures inside him that constantly flowed though him was eroding his coils and pathways. Pretty soon, he wouldn't be able to use chakra and most likely die as it was essentially his life force. Naruto sighed as he reached the top and climbed over, glancing around to see if he missed anything. The hunters had packed up camp and all of them were huddled in a group away from the other demigods, specifically males. He saw Naiko standing next to Percy, staring at Bianca with a look of confusion at her silver clothes. Naruto sighed as he jumped high into the air, arching over the distance between them, and landed with a quiet thud with a small cloud of dust. The hunters immediately drew their weapons, but seeing him they slowly put them away. Naruto raised an eyebrow and nodded appreciatively, before turning and walking to Naiko, who ran forward and showered Naruto with greetings. Naruto only chuckled at his enthusiasm and walked Naiko back over to the small group, who were looking thankful that he wasn't shot full of arrows. Naruto only smiled at them, before standing between them and the hunters to ensure that any arrows flung at them, he would intercept first. The hunters noticed his posture, and a few looked a little annoyed, while the others respected his defense as a sign he took them seriously. Artemis walked forward from the trees and towards her hunters, before speaking a few words and all of them bowing their heads in acknowledgement. Then she turned to Naruto, looking incredibly reluctant, and waved him over. Naruto frowned, before a smile crossed his face and he shook his head. Then waved her over to him. Artemis looked like she had seen a ghost as the rest of the hunters weren't sure to glare at the boy or laugh at their lady's expression. She waved him over with increased annoyance, and Naruto responded with an even larger smile and a mimic of her movements. She looked ready to pop a gasket as she turned red, but then her features relaxed and she started walking forward. She took one step and then waved him over again, like she was dealing with a child. Naruto only grinned with faintly shaking shoulders before taking one step and waving her over to him. She just sighed and resolved herself before walking forward and Naruto mimicking her movements. Eventually, they met in the center, Naruto staring at the goddess with amusement. Hey. Glad to see you healed up this morning. She grew a tick mark, but shook it off, us immortals heal very quickly from almost any injury, even fatal blows. Naruto looked confused for a moment, I thought immortals couldn't be fatally wounded as you can't actually die as immortality different here. She looked at him like he was an idiot, before realization flashed, oh I suppose you're right, it's not a fatal injury if you survive it is it? Naruto grinned, well, that aside, I believe we have things to discuss. She nodded, glad he caught on, yes, the hunters are tagging along back to your camp. I would like to ask that, as you bear no attachment to any other Olympians, you help them stay out of trouble. There was a unanimous cry of dismay from her hunters, but she silenced them with a look that Naruto couldn't see. Naruto laughed, what? Surely they have been there before what's the problem wait let me guess. They last time they were there, they ended up er damaging any males that bothered them. You want me to run interference? What about Thalia? Or Chiron? Thalia carries weight in the camp as a daughter of Zeus, and she is a girl. Tyron is the leader of the camp, can't he just tell everyone to stay clear of them? Why me? Artemis sighed in annoyance. 
There is animosity between the hunters and the campers, so while they would be the best choice, their personal feelings might lead to conflict. Naruto frowned, you really don't trust men at all do you? Artemis looked at him like he was an idiot, yes, they lie, steal, kill, abuse and torture, manipulate and are driven by their sexual needs. They cannot be trusted with a group of maidens. Naruto looked at her like she was an idiot. Did you miss the fact that I am a boy? She shook her head, I am fully aware I have heard only good things from the nature spirits. They say that on your first encounter with them, you apologize for Pan's pervy attitude you called it, and promise that you will never become that to the best of your ability. That is a serious oath. Have you forsworn love? She didn't get the reaction she was expecting. Naruto's bright eyes clouded over with a brief flash of pain and anguish, something that caught her by surprise, but it vanished. So? You need me to watch the hunters. As a favor. Our maiden god is trusting a boy to protect them. Artemis looked angered by his question, I wouldn't trust a boy, I am trusting you. Your aura, your soul, it's one of the purest I have ever seen. Naruto blinked at her in surprise, and she stepped back, realizing how close she had gotten, and blushed slightly before returning to her cold demeanor. Naruto took a moment before shifting stances, and the air around him changed, it became dangerous, high-strung, and volatile. Like a monster. Naruto looked down at her. Do you know what you're asking? I will give you the same warning I gave Chiron a while back. My help is different from most. When you ask me to do something, I do it completely. If I am attacked, and I deem them an enemy, they will die, quickly. If you give me this mission, anyone who gets in my way will be killed, injured, or forced to run. Are you prepared to take responsibility? She looked at the male standing before her. This didn't make sense, where did the cheerful boy of sun go? What happened? His eyes, they were so cold, where did that warmth go? He has suffered incredibly Artemis realized. That pain that flashed in his eyes earlier. He had been heartbroken, his body smashed to pieces maybe that is why his soul shone, so bright it was made of thousands of fractures. It was like it was carefully crafted back together into the original, but stronger than before, colder, more focused and guarded. She thought back to his words, and felt a genuine smile cross her features, protect the hunt. Naruto stared at her for a few more moments, before his happy disposition returned, making her wonder just how much he was truly damaged to be able to change like that. Alright then by the way, this means you owe me two favors now. Blink. Ha. Huh. Naruto smiled cheekily at her, what, you expect me to do this for free? I only protect things that need protection for free, but your girls are vastly more than capable to defend themselves against Camp Half-Blood. I am severe overkill. She glared at him for a moment, trying to make him bend, but he kept that stupid grin on his face, and just staring at it, ate away her resolve to fight. Her anger dissipated as the tension left her shoulders. Very well, as compensation, you will receive one favor from the hunt don't make us kill you afterwards. She said threateningly, trying to regain control of the conversation. She racked her brain for reasons why her guard kept falling around him, but couldn't, so she resolved herself to keep it up at all times. Boys weren't to be trusted. Naruto watched her have her little internal war and felt voices in his head snorting. You've always had this strange ability to make people trust you. If you weren't such a kind person, I could see you being a mainstream villain. Oh, you're back, how is your little private chat? Ignored. Naruto wasn't sure whether to smirk or get annoyed, so he settled for the default response. So. When are we heading out? She glared at him a bit more, before turning to the horizon, any minute now. The hunters noticed where their goddess was staring, and all of them visibly paled. Naruto frowned, before turning to the goddess, who looked to be hating herself. Moon for brains, did you just make more trouble for me? She glared at Naruto before frowning, she resisted the urge to beat him up as she still needed him, and sighed. It's not that he is trouble it's that he loves trouble itself he is so annoying. She muttered, and Naruto lifted an eyebrow, before hearing a strange humming or whirring noise. He looked up and saw the sun rising over the mountains and getting closer. Naruto frowned before entering battle stance, Son Goku, Matatabi, firing coming. I'm here kitten. Bring them on. Naruto felt a small smile tug at the corners of his lips, before preparing himself. The sun kept getting closer and closer, and the heat grew to the point where Percy had to summon a water shield from his group's water bottles, and the hunters had to hide behind trees. Naruto felt Matatabi's and Son Goku's warmth spread though him, and he knew he would survive this just fine. The earth began to steam, and the snow that had previously covered the earth in a thin veil melted away, leaving the ground's natural coldness to seep into everyone's socks. The sun pulled up right in front of them all, and then the light slowly faded. In its place was a Maserati spider. Naruto could see Percy staring at it in shock and salivating slightly with desire in his eyes. Weird. Naruto focused back on the car, it was a red convertible, radiating so much heat it glowed. 
If he was honest, he knew that he didn't understand a thing about how automobiles worked, but decided that wasn't necessary. They were polluters and ran on natural resources, he was pretty sure he was faster than they were anyway. He watched as the driver hopped out of the two-seater vehicle with a megawatt smile, teeth so wide it made him wonder if the son was his dentist. He looked about 17 or 18, with sandy blonde hair and some outdoorsy charm. He was dressed in jeans, loafers, and sleeveless t-shirt. Wow Apollo is hot, Thalia muttered. Percy looked at her strangely for a moment, but then snapped his fingers in understanding. Oh, I get it, he is the sun god. He said with a smile, and Thalia only glared at him, that's not what I meant. Naruto chuckled at their little scuffle, Artemis scowled, but Apollo seemed to catch wind of it as well by his smirk, although he pretended he didn't. Little sister. Apollo waved dramatically as he rushed forward like a knight in shining armor, you don't call, you don't write, how am I supposed to know my darling little sister is okay? Naruto stared at Apollo for a small amount of time, before turning to Artemis. I thought Dionysus was the god of theater, am I confused? Silence. Artemis stared at him wide-eyed for a moment, before swiftly turning away from him as her shoulders shook up and down. Apollo stared at her agape for a moment, before turning to Naruto in awe. You just made little sis laugh. How? Tell me your ways. Artemis rounded on him in an instant, slamming her foot into his chest and sending him flying back into his Maserati. I'm not laughing. And I am not your little sister. We are twins. Yeah, but I was born first. Apollo said proudly with his thumb jutted out pointing at his chest. Artemis growled even more and glared at him. We are twins. How many millennia do we have to have the same stupid argue she seed? So what's up? He cut her off, I see you got the girls with you, you guys need some tips on archery. Artemis growled and looked ready to pummel him again, but Naruto only chuckled. They both turned to him in explanation, and he laughed dryly. Their aim is already frighteningly accurate, if their accuracy got any truer, mankind would be in dire straits. Apollo laughed loudly while Artemis stared at him, thankful for the praise, but annoyed that he prevented her from beating on her idiot brother. Apollo looked up at Naruto with small praise, you're alright kid, who are ya? Naruto grinned, as of right now, temporary guardian of the hunt. Silence. Artemis stared at him in horror, while Apollo stared at him with his jaw so low it was shoveling melted snow. W what? Did you just say? Boy. Don't carelessly throw that title around, you are not the guardian of the hunt. Naruto frowned at her, is that not what you just asked me to do? Artemis glared at him in embarrassment, no. I asked you to watch out for them. Naruto tilted his head to the side, is that not what a guardian does? Artemis shook with embarrassment and anger, her face red with annoyance, and Apollo only watched in awe at the emotions his sister was displaying. Who the hell was this kid? Aki, what's your name? Apollo asked in partial reverence. Naruto twitched at the nickname, and pain and anger flashed though his eyes briefly, before his cold exterior resurfaced. Name is Naruto, not Gaki, do not call me that again. Apollo shivered at the aura, and Artemis looked almost glad that this side of him was back what the hell is going on here. Naruto looked at the sun god coldly, so, Apollo, I assume you are here to take the hunters and campers to Camp Half-Blood. Apollo nodded, yes, that is my reason for being here but wait. I feel a haiku coming on he said loudly, before striking a ridiculous pose and closing his eyes in concentration. The unanimous groan from the hunter and Artemis was all Naruto needed to know. He reached forward and flicked Apollo right in the forehead, shocking the god out of his pose and concentration, stumbling back with a small welt. First Gaki, and now Haiku was this guy trying to piss him off. Thus get going, we are wasting daylight, you have a schedule to keep do you not? Naruto said firmly, before stepping back and giving the god room. Apollo was still looking shocked at him. You didn't get burned. Naruto looked at his fingers, seeing they were steaming a bit, but they were completely undamaged. Thanks guys. We got you. Son Goku grinned and said with a courageous tone. Naruto smirked internally, but he kept an impassive look on the outside, no, why? Apollo approached him cautiously, before reaching forward and touching Naruto on the shoulder. His clothes immediately burned away under his touch, but his skin remained undamaged. Naruto looked at his now torn shirt and grimaced in annoyance. Dude. I like the suit. He said in complaint, before leveling a glare, I don't like you either. Apollo just looked on shocked, same as Artemis. Even the hunt seemed surprised. Naruto noticed all their looks and realized he probably did something not normally seen. He grimaced at that, not knowing what was going on, and turned to glare at Apollo. People are going to wonder what the sun is doing so long on the horizon for, better hurry. Apollo snapped out of his awe and turned to his ride. He clapped his hands, and there was another flash of light, before the car disappeared, and in its place, was a large bus. Naruto thought it was a bus, but it looked so modified, he wasn't sure if it could be considered one. Naruto turned to the hunt and rocked his head at the bus. 
They glared at him in response, but they got on as they had to anyway. As they walked by, Naruto watched and took note of each of their glaring faces, unflinching at their looks of disgust and hatred. It became apparent that while he had fun with them this morning, it no longer mattered as he was a boy. Just as they last of them got on, cramming into the back to avoid them all, the demigods got in afterwards. Annabeth looked at him in genuine surprise as she passed him. He made a mental note to interrogate her on what just happened and looked to Artemis. I will ensure their safety. So don't worry. Naruto said calmly, though I really don't think they need it, it's the will of a goddess isn't it? Naruto said cheekily, his old warmth returning, Artemis was both impressed and confused by the male in front of her. He was so different hopefully, his treatment of the hunters will shed more light on his character. You should be honored, you are the first male I have ever given a quest to. She said with neutrality, but she wanted to see if he would get a big head, gloat, or even swell with pride, something a boy would do. Naruto only shrugged, before waving her off with a shooing motion, like a pesky dog, it'll thank you when the mission's over, now shoo. You gotta hunt to start right. She stared at him in disbelief, he was shooing her off. The nerve. She got ready to retort, but Naruto was already walking away, closing the bus doors. While he was outside. George and Naruto. What are you doing? Apollo asked. Naruto just grunted, get going, I'm right behind you. Apollo looked confused but nodded. Naruto walked back to Naiko's window and smiled to him radiantly. Hey Naiko, I'll race you there. Naiko looked at him in confusion, before grinning like a madman and running to the front, telling Apollo to hurry up. Apollo started his bus up, and the heat started to rise. Naruto's clothes started hissing, but he ignored them. He had more clothes at camp and his weird cloak kept appearing after it was destroyed, it was cool, but also annoying. I mean, it was funny once, but after the next three it got annoying, who showers with their clothes on. Naruto took a few steps back, before turning back to Artemis, you better hurry, they might kill me before you get back. He said with a smile, before turning and running straight by the bus, and then into the air. You could hear Naiko's cheers of glee and his pestering of Apollo as they took off and followed him. Naruto grinned at them, and then ran alongside. Hey sun god. Race you. One favor to the winner. Naruto said with a massive grin, earning him a chuckle from the challenge god. Bring it. Apollo shouted with humor, before flooring it and shooting ahead. Naruto laughed and speed up with him, keeping pace, before slowly pulling ahead, his legs moving in a blur as he raced on the air. The hunters looked at him in disbelief as he kept pace with the sun, Naruto laughed at their expressions and started running around them in a spiral, swooping under and appearing on the other side, before running over the top of them and coming back. He loved running on air, it made him feel untouchable although he was tiring pretty quick, it was way too fun to quit now. He saw Apollo's impressed looks and nodded. I can't go full speed, it'll kill anyone in here with me when the heat rises. He said sadly, and Naruto grinned, looks like I win. Apollo just shook his head, sure. Naruto grinned, before running to the door and jumping on, opening it and stepping in quickly, before closing it just as fast. When he made contact with the floor, he felt fatigue hit him and laughed tiredly, before sinking to the floor. He was immediately jumped by Naiko, who was laughing like crazy. You're so cool. He said excitedly, you're like Zeus. Total superhero. Naruto snorted, and Apollo looked at him in realization, oh, you're one of Zeus's brats, eh? Naruto shook his head tiredly. I don't know what it is, but everyone has such a hard time believing that I am completely mortal. Apollo nearly had a heart attack as he looked at Naruto incredulously, what? No. Naruto grimaced, see? Nobody believes me. Naiko giggled and pulled on Naruto's cloak, pulling him up and walking him back. Naruto took a seat a few spaces back, sitting in between the campers and the hunters. Even now, he had a mission. Naruto sighed and leaned back in his chair, Naiko sitting next to him and pelting him with questions. Naruto only smiled and roughhoused with him a bit, before falling back and resting his eyes. In a minute, I gotta recharge girls, if you're gonna kill me, do it now, cause once we get there, I'm gonna be shadowing you everywhere and if you think you can hide. Naruto turned to them with a feral grin, a gleam in his eye. No I have never failed a mission since I came here, and I don't intend to start now. The girl stared at him for a moment, before scoffing, if we truly wanted to evade you, you would stand no chance. Naruto's grin only grew wider, and then he turned back, smiling with his eyes closed, then try your best. I swore to Artemis I would ensure the safety of each of you until she returned, just try and ditch me, it'll be more fun than simply watching you from the shadows. They looked a little nervous at that, but a few of them grinned, that sounded like a challenge to them. A few had seen the massive power he could wield, and found it an excellent prey to hunt. If he wanted to play, then like all the other boys, he will be put down. Hey Thalia, want to drive? You're a daughter Rufus, right? You're in your domain. You can't let this opportunity pass you by. Oh shit. 
It's times like these that he was happy he received basic shinobi training. Alia, as it was apparently unknown, was deathly afraid of heights. Yeah, a daughter of Zeus, it caught everyone by surprise too. So, while she was crushing the steering wheel under her death grip of fear, Naruto was standing on the ceiling. He darted about quickly, catching and returning the hunters to the back while keeping the other demigods on the other side of him. If the two impacted, he had a sinking feeling the boys would lose their evolutionary purpose, and the women well, he didn't know, but he felt the mystery was better than the answer. Of course, the campers were grateful and also surprised at his ability to remain attached to the flat surface, despite being upside down more than 75% of the time, but Thalia's driving definitely warranted it. Since taking up his post, he had caught and prevented 14 major injuries and a few lives from being lost on the steep inclines, he had to jump out of a window more than once to save a hunter who wasn't prepared. Of course they glared at him maliciously, but he had a mission, and a shinobi never lets their emotions cripple their judgment though, he did wonder how deep their hatred ran. Did they think they would survive the fall or was dying preferable to being saved by a man? So here he was, catching Naiko for the twentieth time, and trying his best to give warnings to steep inclines and stalls which weren't really helpful, but they helped them ride the waves. Jackson handled it pretty well, so it only solidified Naruto's opinion. But eventually, all things come to an end. Naruto was seriously starting to wonder if he should just anchor everyone to their seats with an earth jutsu, or maybe knock them out and stuff them under the seats. He walked forward hurriedly, before touching Thalia on the shoulder to reassure her. And then Thalia hit him with a bolt of lightning. Now, Naruto knew it wasn't really intentional, but he didn't really appreciate it, especially since none of the Bijuu had resistance to electricity. It was why Kumo had two of them in the first place. But his patience had run out. Naruto stormed forward before walking to the driver's seat and waving her attention. She looked at him with wild eyes. He resisted the need to flinch and smiled at her kindly. Hey Thalia, it's okay, give me a moment and you will be fine, I'll take over. Before Apollo could say anything, Naruto opened the door of the sun and hopped out, falling briefly, before running up and catching them swiftly. He disappeared for a moment and then the waves stopped. Thalia was still pale as paper, but when she tugged the controls, she noticed they weren't responding and that they were headed on a straight course without any bumps she wasn't sure if she should be happy or not at that. Apollo also seemed confused. The sun can't break, so what was happening? No way. The sun god walked to the center of the bus before opening the floor panel for an emergency escape, and lo and behold, he saw Naruto. Carrying the sun. Of course, it took him a minute to process this, but Naruto didn't even sigh at him, his breaths coming short with exertion. Taking to camp, just get falls to chill. And so, Apollo spent the rest of the ride trying to console the daughter of Zeus, who was apparently unable to let go of the wheel. Percy and Annabeth went up with Apollo, though Percy hung back. He was there to provide backup support, should either of them be blasted back like Naruto was which didn't look like it felt good. Grover on the other hand, took advantage of the opportunity. He made a mental plea and vowed to immediately apologize to her and pray for forgiveness, before he got up. And walked to the back of the bus. He couldn't help it. The hunters were right there. He was a healthy young satyr. Grover approached them with stars in his eyes and a small amount of drool pooling out of his mouth. A hunter stepped forward before the hunters had their minds blown. They didn't know her. The girl smirked at their expressions before a plume of smoke covered her from view and in her place was Naruto, a dangerous look in his eyes. Grover, I do believe the boss told you to keep your pants on and tight and keep your furry ass far from the girls. Have you forgotten already? The girls were flabbergasted at this. Naruto. How the hell was he here if he was holding up the sun? Was he a god? It would make sense, only divine beings can be in two places at once, but he was mortal. Grover on the other hand, was thinking the same thought over and over again. I'm dead I'm dead I'm dead I'm dead I'm dead. Yes, you are. Naruto said, as if reading his thoughts, and Grover fainted. Well that was fast. Naruto said dryly, before turning to the girls, sorry boss couldn't do that in person, but he is currently running through the air with the sun in his hands. The girls stared at him in horror, you were a girl. Naruto frowned, well, I guess it would be better to explain it to you, rather than let you think in the dark. Please listen carefully, and I'd like to ask you don't share this information with anyone or well I'll have to kill you and everyone you tell, no exceptions. The girls flinched at that, before glaring at him defiantly, to which he smiled in response. Good, now, let me start. He clapped his hands together, and he was enveloped in a small cloud of smoke, before the girl from before was standing before them again. The girls were honestly surprised at this technique. One of the braver ones even reached up and grabbed her, giving her rather well-endowed breast a good squeeze. Naruto flinched at the contact, and a small blush made its way onto her features. And you call men perverts, she said in a feminine voice. 
The only looked at him in shock, it's real. Naruto sighed, which he realized he was doing a lot lately. Well, yes and no. Yes, they are there, but no, they aren't real. They looked confused at that, and the impostor huntress rubbed her nose cutely. Well, first off, I am not actually boss or Naruto, I am a clone created from his life force, I guess you could call me a temporary split personality. I am him, but he is not me. Boss has the ability to augment his life force to accomplish incredible abilities, and as such, here I am and that is why I can appear like this, by augmenting the power he used to create me, I can change form. The girl stared at him in awe, and then horror, I bet you used this for lecherous intent. Naruto immediately turned to the girl with a powerful stare, no, would you like to know why? They glared at him, disbelief evident, but said nothing, Naruto sighed, because I know, partially, of how you feel. They looked completely insulted, and Naruto held up a feminine hand. I wanted to experience it. I wanted to understand both sides of the story, so, boss transformed himself into a woman, for a month, and lived as one in that time and he was horrified with what he found. Perverts, rapists, thieves, molesters, playboys, pedophiles, men in general, didn't seem to take him as an equal. If it wasn't for his training and abilities, he would have been looked down upon the entire month he gave himself. The stares, the expectations, the standards it was like he had this massive social test he took every day. He was horrified that it was like this for everyday life, and so, he created 10,000 clones, like me, and sent them out across the world, transforming into foreign beauties to see if there was a safe place anywhere. Naruto's aura darkened as he returned to his natural form in a puff of smoke and looked at them sadly, and they were very few and far between. The hunters weren't really sure how to handle this, it genuinely sounded like he understood and felt seriously sorry for them. I can't imagine what it must have been like to live your whole life like that, trapped in such a way. Boss tried all types of forms. Big, small, fat, skinny, natural, plastic, kind and mean, rich and poor, dirty and clean. If he was beautiful, he was hounded. If he wasn't, he was ignored. If he was perfect he was assaulted by some drunkard, and if he was the opposite he was disregarded and socially tortured. Nothing he tried seemed to dissuade his gender. He wanted to have this talk with you when he got to camp, but no point now. How will he know we had this conversation? The clone grinned and pointed at himself, I am made of his life force, my memories return to him as I am an aspect of him. When I die, he gets all my memories. The girls looked slightly horrified at this, you die. Naruto nodded, it's not really death, it's more like I am becoming whole again. It's nice to be out and about, but after a while, I miss being the real me if you get what I am saying. So you aren't really him? Naruto frowned, well, strictly speaking, no, but at the same time I am it's confusing, but basically, he is a puzzle, and I am a piece. I am part of him, but he isn't entirely me, I only make up a section. The girls looked surprised at the technique, it was truly useful. He could send an aspect of himself anywhere, respond as he would without controlling it as it is essentially him, and gather any and all information in its life before moving on. They were physical to wait. Does that mean you created the images of 10,000 beautiful females in your head? Naruto frowned, well no, some were not the societal ideal, so probably only 700 or so I got a few from um what are they called? They're like comic books but have more realistic pictures. The girls look surprised at this, Zo listing off some examples she knew, calendars photos. Magazines. Naruto snapped his finger, yes. Magazines. I use those as references to create them. My history with women is well limited, and I honestly don't want to delve into it again. It's part of the reason I wanted to understand them I didn't understand why they acted the way they did what a whack you call that was. Naruto muttered, and the hunters looked at each other for a few moments, a silent discussion ensuing. Naruto looked at them before hearing the demigods coming back. Sorry for this. But I am going to have to hide amongst you again, I'd hate to have my secrets spilled so soon. You can try to beat me up later. Naruto then transformed back into a girl, though this time with a smaller chest, so she could squeeze in and smiled at them all, before whispering. It's just till the end of the ride, after that, I'm gone. If you want to talk to boss, he will get all my memories when I dispel, so don't worry. Thanks. The hunters shifted away from him, and he gave an expression of mock hurt, well some were in deep thought maybe, that was why he got along so well with Artemis, because he truly understood. Because he actually experienced it and realized why they swore their oaths maybe he wasn't so bad. They all looked at each other in question and then decided unanimously. But he is still a male, and they cannot be trusted, wait to reaffirm his story, before even thinking of considering him an ally, much less trusting him. The rest of the ride went by pretty quick, the Naruto clone had her eyes closed, a faint smile, and the hunters stared at her the whole way. They arrived at Camp Half-Blood, and there was a loud banging on the floor. Apollo opened the space and saw Naruto sweating enough to classify as a rainstorm. 
Apollo, I won't be able to set this down gently. If you want to take over, you can. Apollo looked at him, before smiling innocently and sweating nervously. About that Thalia can't let go of the wheel. Burrito paled, what? I'm gonna die here. Apollo looked at him nervously, before giving him a thumbs up, I believe in you. And then shutting the floor escape in his face. Apollo stood up, and you could see it on his face he was debating jumping ship before the landing, but remembered the hunters were here, and Artemis would likely kill him if he abandoned them. He grinned, damsels in distress, this is my moment. He walked forward with a purpose, a giant smile his face, no doubt preparing a courageous speech to Thalia to assure her that he was the man for the job and some other bogus stereotype. But he really should have learned from Naruto's example. Thalia released another shock, and it sent Apollo rocketing back. Naruto's clone jumped in the way, taking the hit while running interference, but he had quite the momentum behind him, and while it did slow him down, it didn't stop him. The clone looked at them nervously as it fell to the floor. Sorry, that cost the rest of my energy, good luck. Pop. And so, the clones vanished in a puff of smoke. They all turned to Apollo. Seeing him touching three maidens to catch himself. Blairs. Nervous laugh. And then screams of terror. Naruto received the memories of the clone and wasn't sure how to feel. On the one side, he was happy that the hunters had listened to his speech and not killed him, but at the same time they were probably torturing the sun god that was currently needed to save him. Desperate times, desperate measures. Shukaku. Sand armor needs some mega reinforcement. I'm hitting the ground hard, let's test your ultimate defense. Bring it shrimp. Shukaku cackled madly, sand suddenly started coming out of the back of his cloak, from the back of his waist. It stretched across his entire frame and coated his whole body in a protective layer. Shukaku immediately went about hardening it, crushing pieces together under such pressure, it would kill anything that was in between. Naruto let him focus while he focused on the camp. He could see the big house from here and he needed to start his descent. Here we go. He roared, before Kurama's chakra bolstered his own, and Naruto sent a questioning emotion to Kurama, who laughed. And have you dying yet kid, I still haven't spilt any golden blood. Naruto chuckled at his lifelong partner, and grinned, got it. He poured on his adrenaline, and started carrying the sun to the ground, or the lake near the cabins. On the plus side, this is definitely a first for anyone. You are the first creature alive to save the sun from a crash landing. Chimei said cheekily, and the Bijuu snorted at her humor, while Naruto only smiled around gritted teeth as he focused on his task. He started pumping more chakra into his strides, and while it hurt like a bitch, he was slowing down and descending. He approached the camp and adjusted his course, before coming in hot, literally, for the lake. A couple was currently making out on a small raft, and Naruto felt a pang in his soul. A I am so sorry moment was all he could dedicate to this missed moment for the couple below. Remember when I said I had the worst luck imaginable? I take it back, I hand the title to that guy right there. I can't help but agree with you. Naruto came in fast and heavy. You too. Move or die. That definitely got their attention, and the girl tackled the boy into the water, pulling him under and dragging him to the shore. Naruto tried to avoid them, but he was carrying a flaming bus knot, exactly the most precise object to make a clean landing with. Naruto gave a roar of defiance and touched down on the lake, skidding across its surface as Isobu pumped chakra and helped control, Kukuo and Chimei backing him up with control and fortification. Matatabi cheered him on while Son Goku went on about how manly he was right then. Seiken was trying to keep Shukaku from removing the sand armor at the side of the water, and Jayuki was watching this whole thing go on, wishing he could use a camera. Naruto eventually realized he wasn't going to make it and roared up at the bus. Jackson. He would have to thank the guy later. On call, a wave wall of water rose from the other side and started saturating the ground around them to prevent fires. Naruto then abandoned the previous plan and slid to the back of the bus before sinking underwater for more traction and pulled. The bus lurched and eventually stopped, pulling to a halt near the banks of the lake. The whole thing was steaming and Naruto himself had lost his clothes in the event. He was quick to duck underwater and cover himself, cursing the time it took for his cloak to manifest. He just hoped that couple from before wasn't watching. Eventually, the campers came out with towels and dryers, and even spare clothes. Naruto was sure to use his newly appeared cloak to cover himself adequately, before snatching a pair of pants and quickly putting it on. Everyone watched him do so, wondering why the hell he was and where the hell his pants went. Naruto, why were you hanging on to the sun nude? Naruto glared, I was carrying the damn thing. You try holding the sun and not have your clothes burn off from the heat. I don't practice magic, and my immunity only pertains to me, not my clothing. He almost snarled, though his embarrassment was visible as Nirala eyes were on him. 
Jiren and the campers bugged out at his statement, Naruto just snorted and walked over to the bus, before wading in, much to the dismay of the campers, and started helping the hunters out the back. He did it quickly so nobody noticed, their eyes on the other campers that survived the wreck Grover was making quite the scene with Apollo, and Thalia looked a little pale, but much better than before. Naruto grabbed two girls at a time, ignoring their disgusted and affronted looks, and channeled chakra though them, so he could drag them across the surface. Of course they forgot they were being dragged by a male they realized they were walking on water and this energy it felt amazing. If they asked if he was a son of Poseidon too, he might scream. After quickly evacuating the hunters, he turned to them all, and then several plumes of smoke covered them from view. There were a few startled cries, and several clones were now surrounding them, before each lightly touched them, and his Matatabi's fire nature traveled through them, evaporating all the water off them though it left them with some interesting hairstyles. Naruto was sure to not point that out didn't need to make them hate him more and it was funny. Hami he really did have a death wish didn't he? That's what I have been saying. But no, it's always quiet Kurama, not now Kurama Kurama mocked, grinning at Naruto, Naruto replied with a mental smirk, and left it at that. You guys play capture the flag with the campers dot 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 how do you not kill them? It is very trying and requires a massive strength of will we hunters pride ourselves in out mental strengths and capabilities. Zo said strictly. Naruto sat cross-legged in front of the group, sitting in the dirt while the hunters stared down at him, mixed between killing him and ignoring him. So, Artemis really likes you guys strong huh? Can I ask, what are you fighting for? Naruto asked curiously. They looked at him like he was an idiot, Zo answering for them, for Lady Artemis, she is our goddess, our patron, how could we not? Naruto frowned, nothing personal. More frowned at him, before shaking their heads, Theob seemed the most insulted, and spat out a retort, my lady is all that matters. Naruto seemed to stare at all of them, despite actually looking into the sky, it was an unsettling feeling. So you fight to protect her. Huh? Nothing ambitious, just to defend what you already have. Naruto sighed, before standing, turning and walking away. Good for you, when fighting to protect, that is when you attain true strength. They looked on as he disappeared into the camp, before turning back and heading for their cabin. Capture would be starting soon, no need to fall behind. One of the hunters froze for a moment, do you think Naruto will fight with the campers? That was a dangerous thought. All the hunters looked at each other briefly, that boy had fought toe-to-toe -to -toe with their patron, a feat most gods aren't able to do, and that was without any of his abilities. They wondered how they would combat such a foe, but decided that they wouldn't need to worry, the battle was moved to the next morning, nobody really thought of the battle, as they were too busy trying to help Apollo drag the sun out of the lake and repair the damages done to the docks. Naruto wandered through the camp, his mind wandering as he went. He knew he shouldn't get attached, as he would be taking the first chance he got to return to his homeworld. He might not like some of those people, but he had friends there, family. Hiding to protect, a eh, Haku. Naruto muttered as he walked through the camp, heading for Peleus. He hoped Peleus was okay and would let him spend the night there. It was his duty to guard the fleece, but Naruto always made a point of visiting him and even joining him in his duty when he just wanted to relax. His thoughts drifted to Naiko, and he felt his anger spike. He clenched his fists together and grit his teeth. They don't get it do they the suffering they'll make Naiko and do rassholes. Yes, kitten they don't care. To them, men are monsters. Who cares about hurting monsters? Naruto just seethed internally, while keeping a flawless impassive gaze on the outside. Fuck them, Naiko deserves better. Hit, I know you, but you can't. If you say I can't look after him, I swear. Naruto thought dangerously, and Kurama sighed. You know what they have been through, you can't expect them to understand. That makes it worse. They refuse to understand. They tear apart the hearts of anyone that they don't like, regardless. I will never forgive that. To make someone have to bear the pain of being alone, condemning others for making them feel the same that is hypocritical in its truest for its unforgivable. He wandered at a leisurely pace, not really paying attention to his surroundings, when a cluster of girls ran into him when they were turning the corner. Naruto immediately caught the few that collided with him and immediately set them back straight, before giving a swift apology and continued his walk. The girls looked flabbergasted and the campers all around rolled their eyes. The Aphrodite campers really didn't give up, this was around their 11th attempt and they had yet to even be noticed. Little did they now, not just the campers were watching, and an age-old rivalry only had more fuel added to the fire. Dinner was always a pretty loud event and Naruto usually didn't attend. He preferred to simply take his plate and leave. People had tried to tell him it was rude, but he shrugged it off, it's his blessings and thanks, he should give them to who he wants to. But not tonight. Naruto had a mission, and as much as it bothered him, he needed to complete it even if he really didn't want to. Naruto, despite popular protest, elected to sit on the floor, resting his back against a pillar on the outskirts. 
He received multiple invitations to join cabin tables, the children of Aphrodite were very persistent, but refused, he couldn't afford to get attached. His goal was to leave this place, he didn't belong here, not in this world, or amongst its people. He always stayed aware of the Artemis table, watching over it, and occasionally sending bursts of Kai at approaching people. He spared the little girls, but he gave the boys a small to large amount depending on their age. They were the ones at risk, better learn to fear them now before you become permanently damaged. He hadn't actually had to stop any actual confrontations, but seeing as the Aphrodite cabin stood up unanimously all of a sudden, he knew it was better to stand in the way than at the sidelines. He groaned in annoyance, before standing up and walking towards them in tandem with the Aphrodite cabin. Just as they clashed, Naruto was standing right in front of the hunters, staring at them with his crystal chips of blue. Oh hey, is there something you needed? He asked, projecting his aura to tell them that he knew exactly what they were doing and was giving them an out. The girls seemed to blush at this, some looked at him with mixed looks he didn't even want to decipher, and the guys were only looking at the hunters, one thing in their eyes. Disrespect. This wasn't going to be pretty. One of the boys tried to shove past Naruto, but Naruto only smiled and stuck his chakra to him, so when his shoulder slammed in, it stayed in place as Naruto smiled at him kindly, but everyone knew it was fake. A little impatient are we? Last time I checked the bathroom was the other way. Naruto said, flaring his kai to try and give the guy one last chance. Nope. Where the hell is this rivalry coming from? The boy seethed and wrenched free when Naruto released him, and just as he walked by, Naruto sighed, before the boy suddenly fell unconscious, collapsing to the floor with hardly a sound or movement, just a small grunt, and bam, instant KO. Nobody saw Naruto even move. I'm sorry, but Artemis has given me a mission until she returns and you know my policy don't you? He said with a sweet voice, but all the campers only stared in horror at the kid behind Naruto, who wasn't moving. Naruto snorted, before turning to the hunters and shrugging. With a strange look of glee and sadistic pleasure, two girls got a countdown, and soccer ball kicked the boy in the ribs and groin. He slid across the floor and stopped a few feet in front of the girls. He was unaware, so I will pardon him this once. I would hate to kill any of you, so please don't approach the hunters for the duration of their stay. I'd go into a dangerous sounding speech of the hell you'd face if you failed but well I don't think I need to write. A strong blast of Kai. Unanimous nods. Big Naruto smile, thanks. Before all the enthusiasm soon left his body as he took a step to the side, wandering back to the pillar and sliding down it. He took a few breaths, before closing his eyes and shaking his mental self. Chukaku. Can you retract the sand armor? I appreciate it, but it's not needed right now, thanks a bunch. Chukaku grumbled about being unappreciated, and Naruto smothered his doubts with a promise to play tonight in his gate. All complaints ceased. Naruto let his legs play out as he stared at the dimming sky, before resolving himself. He needed to he couldn't put it off anymore he just had to. Read them. Naruto sighed, before turning to his back satchel and opening it. He withdrew his hands, and several pink letters with heart stamps were neatly stacked in his hand. The Artemis table widened their eyes in horror and watched as Naruto emotionlessly opened each, read through each one, and then combusted them with his hand. The Aphrodite cabin wasn't sure how to feel about this. He was reading them. But at the same time destroying them afterwards what does that mean? Probably rejected but he read through them. That means he cared right. Well no. Naruto sighed as he read the last letter. His opinion of the Aphrodite cabin wasn't high to begin with, so he shouldn't be surprised with what he read. Promises of the best night of his life, great sex, and his personal favorite, we are much better than anything else you will find. He got the whole, my mother is a goddess of love but they weren't really being loving, they were being well unlovable. He sighed heavily, before he saw the hunters getting up and moving out of the pavilion, awesome. Naruto stood up, before stretching a little and heading out. He was going to follow them yes, but at a safe distance he liked being intact. And so, he followed them to the camp border. Really? They are restless, I recall multiple escapades of yours that were doomed to fail for your chair. I admit defeat. The hunters were moving fast and silently, and just as they were about cross, Naruto appeared in a small cloud of dust from appearing there rapidly. You guys heading out? You weren't thinking of ditching me were you? He asked innocently, though by his tone an answer wasn't necessary. Yes, we were, now move aside boy. A girl stepped forward. She was definitely the largest and most muscled, with a red undershirt showing itself Fiat was still pretty aggressive. Naruto snapped his fingers at her and smiled, well I like your honesty, I can't let you go without me. Huh? Naruto grinned, if I remember correctly, Artemis's words to me were dot protect the hunt she didn't say that you had to remain in the camp for me to protect you. They looked at him in confusion, Zo taking control of the confusion, as unfavorable as it is to travel with a boy, you're not bad. Naruto grinned, well, might I make a suggestion. 
They looked annoyed, but nodded, Naruto smiled sadly, our best bet would be to leave after the capture the flag game. They looked appalled at the option, and Naruto only sighed, let me explain. You have a running tradition, and an undisturbed winning streak right? It is unlikely that you would leave without the goddess before an event and nothing is wrong. Camp will send people after you, and I for one, don't want to travel with any of them mediating your two groups sounds like a horrendous undertaking. But that's not important. If we wait till after the games, you can leave in relative peace and claim that now you have finished the games, you must leave for her. If push comes to shove, and in emergency cases only, I can transform into her myself and force them to let us go. They clearly looked unhappy with the idea that he would impersonate their goddess, a male, but it was for emergency purposes. And what's to stop us from leaving right now? Fia challenged. Naruto only grinned at her, and then his aura grew predatory. You cannot defeat me, so you would have to resolve to sneak past and, even if you somehow managed well let's just say hunting the hunt sounds quite fun, a world's first for sure. Naruto grinned dangerously. The hunters looked at him in disbelief that he could fend them all of successfully, and Naruto felt a light bulb go off. How about this? A duel, all of you versus little all me. If I win, you will wait for me, if I lose, I will go with you right now but either way, I will go with you. That is non-negotiable. They seemed disappointed by that, and Naruto sighed apologetically, I gave my word, sorry. They seemed to think for a moment, before Zo smiled. Capture the flag. Naruto tilted his head to the side, hmm. The hunters turned to her with realization, and then smirked at Naruto. All of us versus you right. We will borrow the field for the night. First to either incapacitate the enemy team or take the flag all the way to your own, wins. And if I have taken your flag when you have taken mine. First to reclaim both wins. Naruto stared at her for a moment before nodding, I thought you guys would have made me survive until morning or something like that, you weren't being merciful were you? It won't go well if you did. Zo smirked, that would be unfair. Naruto snorted, yeah, for you. They glowered at the insult. You don't believe the entire hunt could subdue you? Naruto grinned, yes, nobody has ever caught me when I truly wish to flee. They smirked, very well, how about this, a small tournament. A game of capture the flag, hunt, and a duel since you suggested it. Naruto grinned, alright, I like it. Which is first? They grinned, capture the flag, then the duel, and then you run and hide. Should the sun rise before we capture you, you win. Okay. Define capture. Bound with rope. Alright. As it just so happens, the flags are already in place shall we begin. They nodded, but before turning away, Naruto stopped them. Oh, and just so you know, if any of you tries to escape, I will personally restrain you and detain you, until your goddess enters camp I don't care how long. My storage place can sustain life for a little over a year so I am prepared. He said with a knowing look. A few of the girls flinched and twitched at being caught and dashed off. Naruto grinned, before sending out a clone to act as a starter. He just couldn't stop grinning. This is gonna be fun. He roared out, unaware that this match was already drawing spectators, as the hunters advertised a beatdown of Naruto. Naruto was standing at the creek, staring at all the hunters on the opposite bank. They outnumbered him over 20 to 1, but it didn't matter to him, he was so pumped. He stared at each of them, a grin on his face as they glared at him. This was going to be so fun. Naruto's clone stood in the center of the river, before pointing to both teams, boss, hunters, retreat to your flags, and wait for the signal you will now it when you see it he. The hunters looked wary, but nodded in affirmation and walked off, shooting off a few glares and predatory looks. He could tell that some of them didn't even care if they lost this round, they were excited for the third game. The chance to run him down and catch him. Naruto grinned as he leapt into the trees and raced to his starting point, he would not fall behind. He landed with a quiet thud, before spinning around and facing the other direction, staring into the sky for the signal. He had a pretty good idea of what it was he could hear the screeching from here. With a loud shout, a small glowing screaming shuriken flew into the air, and on an unseen command, it exploded in a massive bang with a bright light show of blues and whites. Naruto grinned at the display, before folding his hands into a familiar cross. Aiju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. But several puffs of smoke later, Naruto grinned at all of them, and they all grinned back. Naruto slammed the palms of his hands on the ground, and the earth rumbled. Begin defense plan, home turf. The clones were shocked, but grinned in a terrifying display of eagerness, and disappeared in a blur of speed. Naruto watched them all go with his trained eyes and turned back to the flag, before his face fell slightly. I miss you guys, Gamma Kichi, Gamma Tatsu, Gamma Bunta, I wish I could bring you here with me. You guys could have just sat around the flag, and the girls would be able to do shit. It would be so funny. He said with a faint smile, before clapping his hands together, and then sitting cross-legged on the ground, eyes closed as he lowered his senses. He could already hear the startled explosions, cries of panic, and roars of outrage. 
Naruto was giggling at them as he reviewed some of their memories. The fence plan, home turf was actually two separate plans depending on the situation. It was more like a format of how to act, not a set plan. If it was a life or death situation, the clones would be bombs, not pranksters, and he would go on offensive instead of defensive. Right now, some of his clones had used the hinge to turn into the actual flag of the enemy team and had a clone of me running around as they tried to grab him. After being cornered, he would hide, dispel, and another pair would become me and the flag. Other clones ran interference, and some would hinge into animals, trees, rocks, anything within the river, and even a few nature spirits. That was a shocker for some of the creatures, but Naruto made sure to explain he wasn't actually one of them, it was just an ability of his to transform. They seemed disappointed at that, but he really wasn't sure why. After almost half an hour, Naruto's clones began to run out. He debated sending more to keep the charade going, but decided that it would be better to simply let it go. He wondered if maybe he should let them take his flag as an apology, but decided against it. He wasn't going to build a relationship of giving them what they want. Never again was he going to be a mindless puppet fool. Naruto rose to his feet, dusting off his pant legs as he stretched slightly. Just as he was about to touch his toes, a silver arrow came slicing through the trees, and Naruto seemingly unaware stretched in a way he dodged it. He smiled faintly as he could hear the growling from the hunters and how the ones that were there started shooting more arrows at him while one of the others were hissing that he would notice. Naruto walked to his flag and pulled on the cloth, stretching it out so he could look at the logo he was given. It wasn't a symbol of the camp as he wasn't a demigod, it was actually a circle, with the kanji for 1 through 9 written on the inside edge, and in the center, was his reaper death seal. Naruto was surprised that the flag had that, and wondered who made them. He would certainly need to question them on how they knew and who else knew. Naruto whirled around and caught an arrow that would have severed his spine, and glanced around to see all the hunters were surrounding him, glaring at him. They probably realized that the flag I had was fake. I didn't know you could change into objects instead of people. Zo said with grudging admiration. Naruto grinned, well, my clones can, but I can't transform into anything smaller than me. They aren't flesh and bone like I am. They seemed interested by that fact, but stayed their questions as they all glared down at me. The girl in red seemed to be even angrier than her compatriots. Actually, he remembered. Oh. Naruto walked forward to the girl and bowed his head. I am sorry for my clone. He tried to catch you, not take advantage of you. He saw you lose your balance from the sudden appearance of another clone and tried to absorb the damage from your fall he didn't think you would actually manage to recover yourself in such a short time. Very impressive by the way, regaining your bearings like that after a shock and loss of balance, Artemis trains her hunters well. She still seemed pissed, but the compliment seemed to abate her anger somewhat. Maybe she wouldn't go for growing shots now hopefully. Naruto turned back to the flag and saw two girls were silently sneaking up. They stared at each other awkwardly, before rushing for the flag. Just as they made contact, the area exploded with smoke, and the girls we sent tumbling back, with a clone holding the flag with a stupid grin, before several other clones appeared from the undergrowth, each with the use of the henge turning into the flag, and took off. The girls cried in dismay and Naruto smiled at them. You never said anything about taking our own flag, all that was said was I needed to have both flags in my base, I'll just bring it back when I have yours he said with an evil grin, before walking off in their flag's direction. The hunters wordlessly split onto two groups, one pursuing the clones and taking them out to try and find the real flag, while the other half raced ahead of the blonde otherworlder, waiting to confront him on their turf. Naruto smirked, you really shouldn't split up when someone like me can transform. Naruto strolled through the woods, his smile in place. This was great. This world was completely unaware of who he was or what he could do he was pretty sure now why shinobi always preferred to keep their own secrets to be underestimated it's a wonderful feeling. When someone is hunting you and they have no idea they are hunting their own predator it's ecstatic. It was a pleasant walk, he never felt fear, he knew he couldn't lose now, especially since home turf didn't just apply to his territory. It applied to the entire battlefield. The dozen silver arrows suddenly shot out, they were blunted, smart girls. They knew that actually arrows will bounce off so they increased the weight in hopes of inflicting blunt force damage instead of trying to pierce. Naruto caught the first arrows and in an impressive display of speed, he used it as a makeshift baton. He swatted away a few more arrows before to his chagrin, his arrow broke. The last two collided with his chest, knocking him back a few paces before falling off and Naruto standing back up with a brief stretch. Did that break my rib? And bruise your lung. You're lucky I'm here kid, otherwise you'd be coughing up blood. Naruto grinned and swiped away a small bit of saliva and grinned at the trees, and the hunters shivered as his eyes pierced their cover and felt his gaze. A few immediately booked it, while a few of the braver ones stuck in the area, moving about to try and escape the unsettling feeling. 
Naruto watched them run about, they were fast he would give them that, high tune into low jonin speed, but he was beyond cage level with just Kurama but now, he had no idea how strong he could be that he was working with the other Biju. What would it take to kill him at this point? More arrows rained down as he walked, snatching a few out of the air and using them as batons, only for them to break and be replaced. He could see their astonished expressions and noticed they were gradually increasing the force and speed of the arrows. They're testing me, trying to determine how much I can take without taking too much damage why? Don't they want to kill me? Interesting. Naruto just kept walking, before blurring out of sight in a burst of speed, the hunters immediately fled back to the flag, as that was where Naruto would have to show up. The defenders immediately formed a defensive ring around their flag and waited for movement. A tense silence ensued before a second group of hunters appeared and reinforced their defenses. Zo immediately looked over to see Fia bleeding them and nodded at her before looking back out for Naruto. The entire group stayed there in tense silence before Zo started speaking quietly. His flag, where is it? Fia grimaced, heavily defended. There was over 10 clones covering it and I don't know how many more he had hidden away. It being a trap, we rushed back here as it was a play to stall for time. What's happening here? Zo growled, the armor arrows have the most effect on him, so switch out. He was walking though us. Thea growled, that's a boss move alright. They stared into the darkness before Naruto appeared, waving at them jovially, hey. Mind moving a bit. Your kinda blocking the flag. Zo glared at him, and the hunters all turned to him fire when there was an outrage cry. Zo turned to see the hunters restraining each other, and when she felt her danger sense tingling, she turned and looked in horror as Fia grinned at her and slammed her into the ground. Zo felt the air leave her lungs, and Fia capitalized on it. She quickly restrained her, and Naruto only stared as this took place. Fia looked up at Naruto, alright boss. Flag is ours. And then the entire second force of hunters turned into clones. Zo gasped in horror as she realized the predicament she was in and growled at Naruto. Naruto only sighed and grabbed the flag and then started walking away. I know you know of my abilities why split up. I told you I once created 10,000 clones, each with their own identities and personalities did you think I wouldn't capitalize on this? You're dealing with a cloning shapeshifter who knows all of you what did you think was going to happen? Zo just growled more on the ground and the clone holding her side, just wait a few minutes and it will be over. That wasn't the right thing to say apparently. Zo snarled and a hidden blade popped out, stabbing the clone, and it dispelled. The other clones tried to restrain her, but in the moment of confusion, the other hunters gained freedom and helped the others. Naruto watched as his prisoners escaped with their flags, taking note of their style and weaponry as they did. Zo stood and glared at Naruto, who hadn't moved, I agree it was foolish to trust the new group, but we have you now. Naruto saw all the hunters ready their bows, and he sighed even more, do you really think those were my only clones? Zo immediately tensed and jumped high in the air. And good timing too. Fifty clones appeared from the rubble, trees, branches, grounds, everywhere. Instead of taking prisoners, they simply knocked the hunters in reach out before catching them and laying them down softly around the flag. Naruto watched, leaning on the flag. Zo landed and immediately blurred into speed, evading still appearing clones and glaring at Naruto, who laughed. Did you think I was only going to hide clones on my side? Why the hell would I limit myself? This is a battlefield, I'm not going to waste chances. Zo growled further and then pulled out a pair of silvery hunting knives. She blitzed around at even faster speeds and carved away at the clones that attacked her and her comrades. Naruto watched with slight admiration as she made light work of them, and within the minute, they were all dispatched, and she was standing by the flag, breathing hard. Where is Fiab? Naruto snorted, still playing with my clones. She has cut down the number by a good margin, but she still has a ways to go. Zo panted, before readying her knives and setting herself into a defensive stance, ready to defend her sisters. Naruto smiled at that and twirled the flag around in his fingers like a bow staff. Well, I'll be going now, thanks for the fun. Naruto turned and walked away, humming a tune she didn't recognize, and went to check on her sisters who were starting to wake up. She grimaced as she realized she was outsmarted and vowed that once her sisters were up and ready, they would seek revenge. Naruto walked calmly through the trees as spun his new flag, wandering towards his side. Naruto, why didn't you send the rest of the clones? There are several more clones throughout her side of the battlefield, why only use that section? Matatabi said curiously. It was a test of her abilities and I knew she wanted to take care of her sisters, I wasn't going to let her pass out knowing she couldn't care for them, that is cruel. This is a game after all, not a war. I'm surprised you haven't killed anyone yet, I commend your strength of will. Isobu said, and Naruto grinned, coming from you, that's huge, thanks. Naruto walked to the river separating their sides, and as he jumped across, he felt a wire trip, and he heard the air whistle as a trap sprung. 
Naruto immediately used his air walking abilities to shoot into the air above and watched as the whole river bank was suddenly covered in spikes and arrows were sunk into the sand. He landed and saw Phoebe's force appear with his flag in their hands. Naruto felt a smile tug on his lips, but he replaced it with a grin. So, you got it huh? The Ab grinned victoriously, you can't escape us, we are the hunter of Artemis. Naruto only grinned at her dangerously, well, I guess I'm pretty special then. The flag in Phoebe's hands all of a sudden poofed into smoke and re-emerged as rope, which snaked around her and bound her limbs together, and she fell to the ground in dismay and shock. The hunters were just as speechless as she was. A clone of Naruto appeared behind Naruto and gave him his flag, and Naruto grinned. Well, I'll be going now. Was his cheeky statement before running down the river back and then crossing the river with few ripples as he slid across the surface and ran. The hunters gave chase and a few stayed behind to free an enraged Phoeb. Naruto laughed as he went on, the chase bringing back memories of his pranks, the Anbu that chased him across the village and back. They only caught him a few times, and each one was a chase to remember. Naruto snaked in between trees and doubled back to shoot through their ranks at high speeds to taunt them. He wanted to see them at their best, and they weren't taking him seriously still. Come on. Show me your best. You won't catch me without it. Naruto shouted gleefully before charging towards his base. Just as he was about to make contact, an arrow exploded into rope and it bound his legs. He tumbled and slid into the clearing his base was in and laughed before looking at the angry hunters behind him. Nice shot. Was all he said before he grunted and snapped the bindings. The hunters took advantage of his predicament and dogpiled him, restraining him and holding him down. Naruto laughed at them and wrestled playfully, trying to get them off without hurting them. They seemed to notice this and press their advantage. Eventually, he stopped moving and Naruto grinned at them. Well, you got me, what now? He said with a large smile. It was infectious, the girls tried to fight it off with their scowls, don't move. Naruto sighed and let his head fall back, thudding against the earth. Okay, but the flags are under me, so if you want to win, I am going to move, so what's next? They glanced at each other, before nodding. One hunter stepped back and pulled out a particularly heavy arrow and aimed at Ono. Naruto paled as hunters grabbed his legs and forced them apart. You move and you suffer. Naruto nodded frantically, and they smirked, all boys were the same. The hunter reached under Naruto and groped around for the flags. They weren't there. They snarled and one of them punched him, only to gasp as he puffed out into smoke. They heard laughing ricochet throughout the clearing, and another Naruto stood at the edge of the clearing, both flags on his lap, as he stared at their shocked expressions. When I doubled back, I swapped places with a clone. You have been playing with a clone ever since then. They looked at him in shock and only watched as he walked to his base and planted both flags in his base. Well, looks like I win. He said with a megawatt smile, and the girls didn't even blink. This hadn't happened before. This wasn't supposed to happen. How did this happen? The hunters all stood up and groaned and glared at him. Naruto only laughed, Akmon, don't be mad, it was a good game. You ready for the duel? They didn't seem to be ready for that. Naruto laughed and walked forward, all of them on guard, but didn't back away. Naruto and a few clones walked out and started healing their abrasions and bruises. Zo and her group are okay, just a few knocked out, but they're fine. They should be coming though the clearing in a few seconds actually. On the dot, Zo and her hunters appeared in a flash and kicked Naruto away. He skidded across the earth and pouted at them, for real. I was just healing them, geez. Zo looked shocked at that and then looked in astonishment as he had both flags in his base. She ground her teeth but sighed in recognition. Well done, you have bested us this time, but never again. Naruto grinned at her cheekily, oh I don't know about that. The clones came forward again and tended to all their wounds. A few popped this weird food in their mouths, and they instantly looked better, wounds healing on their own. What was that? Naruto asked in astonishment, they were like soldier pills. Ambrosia food of the gods. It has healing and restorative properties, but as we aren't fully gods, we can't have more than two squares it would kill us when we burned up. Naruto was amazed at that, but also doubtful, and asked if he could see a square. They were hesitant, but nodded. Naruto inspected the square and frowned, what would happen if a mortal tried it? They would combust, was the unanimous reply. Naruto snorted, PTFF, food of the gods. He stood up to his full height and beamed at all the girls, Raymond is the food of the gods. Not the stuff. I refuse to accept it. He said childishly, and the girls looked at him like he was an idiot. A few cracked a smile, but it instantly disappeared as they realized what they were doing. Ambrosia is their food. And nectar is the drink of the gods. Phoebe claimed with annoyance, and Naruto physically withered, before turning away and shaking his head savagely. No. Raymond is the true way. Broth is the drink of the gods. Not that. I refuse. 
he said, before turning them to with mock looks of pity, poor hunters, you have fallen astray from the true way, you will be missed. He said forlornly, before wiping away fake tears. The hunters were speechless. What even is Raymond? Zo muttered in confusion, and Naruto tensed. The other hunters seemed to realize the danger, and backed away comically, leaving Zo there alone in her confusion. Naruto turned to her with comical eyes. You've never heard of Raymond? He asked quietly, and Zo was actually nervous. And no, hey. Naruto scooped her up bridal style and charged towards the pavilion, I surrendered the duel. Something more important has come up. He said and carried away a wailing hunter, while the others stared at their retreating form. What the hell? Does that mean we win? The hunters nodded dumbly, before turning to her sisters with an evil grin. That leaves the hunt left. Grins all around. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now, and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.